If you have your Bibles, you may turn with me to Acts 16, Handling a 16. Acts 16, Handling a 16. And I'm going to start from verse 25. It was about midnight that Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns unto God and the other prisoners was listening to them. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake that shook the foundation and the prison doors. At once the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came off. The jailer woke up and he saw that the prison doors was open. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. Verse 28, but Paul shouted, do not harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for the lights, rushed in and fell and trembled at Paul and Silas's feet. Then he brought them out and he asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus that you will be saved and your household will be saved. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him all and to all the others in his house. At this hour, or at that hour of the night, the jailer took them, washed their wounds, and immediately he and all his family was baptized. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, bless your word, Lord. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Your word de de uh, declares by the opening of it, it brings forth light, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will give us understanding, for it says that when understanding comes, confusion flees. I thank you in the name of Jesus that you are about to speak to us, Lord. Let everyone that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God has to say in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every deaf and dumb spirit, Lord, every spirit, Lord, in the name of Jesus of rebellion, every spirit that wants to close our ears and bind our hearts, Lord, to not receive your word. But I proclaim and declare, Lord, in the name of Jesus that your word says that it's sharper than a two-edged sword and it will cut into our our lives cut into our monies cut into our situation cut into our minds cut into our spirit in the name of Jesus and give us clarity of thought in the mighty name of Jesus somebody shout amen, amen. hallelujah 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 like I said I'm not going to be very long but I want to speak upon something very simple and it's simply called praise will be my response turn to your neighbor and say praise will be my response my praise will be praise will be my response praise will be my response praise will be my response come on touch another person and say praise will be my response pray turn to someone that you haven't greeted yet and say tell them i hope your praise will be your response there we go there we go now, in the book of Acts, it speaks about Paul and Silas, and many of us know this, this scripture and this portion, and, and Paul and Silas was, was waiting on the Lord. They were waiting on the Lord. They were waiting to listen from the Lord. If you have been here for the couple of weeks that we've been busy, we've been speaking about listening to the voice of God and not your emotions. Amen. So they were not bound by their emotions. They were waiting on the Lord. Paul was one of those people that said that I no longer love, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Last week we spoke about Lazarus where Jesus not only, uh, uh, where Jesus didn't uh, mourn because the people were mourning. He mourned because of the pain and affliction of a spirit upon his people. Amen. And Paul comes to a point in this scripture, in this passage where he does exact same thing. Not speaking to the person, but speaking to the spirit. And they were traveling and they're waiting upon the Lord and they wanted to go here and the Lord said, no, don't go. They wanted to go to this place and, and, and the Lord said, no, don't go. And he finally, he falls asleep and God gives him in a vision and it's called the Macedonian call. And he receives a vision. He receives a Macedonian call in a vision and God shows, tells him, go now. And he goes. Paul and Silas, they go based upon a call that God has given them. Excuse me. So they heard this call, they see the vision and, and God gives them the right of way to leave. As they come into the city, there's this young slave girl that was possessed by a spirit of fortune telling. Amen. 
Somebody say a spirit of fortune telling. You have to be very careful. There's a difference between being a prophetic speaker and being a fortune teller. Amen. The prophetic will always receive partially. But a fortune teller will tell you exactly to the T how it's going to go. That's how you know the difference. There's always a difference between spirits. Amen. So this slave girl was possessed by the spirit and she was mocking Paul and Silas. She wasn't mocking them in direct. She, she was mocking them indirectly, yes. By saying that they are of Jesus Christ. They have come to serve us with the good news of salvation. And the Bible says that for days she walked after them shouting this thing. You see, sometimes the enemy will follow you and instead of mocking you, he's actually announcing your arrival. Because <laughs> this girl was actually mocking them, telling them and, and indirectly telling the people what they are coming to do here. Paul and Silas never announced that they were going to come to Macedonia. But the devil was shouting that they are coming in the name of Jesus to proclaim the good news of salvation and lead us to Jesus Christ. He was actually announcing their mission in Macedonia. And the Bible says he turned around and he rebuked the spirit of fortune telling. After a few hours, the spirit left her. And this was the reason why Paul and Silas got captive, taken captive, thrown into prison because they delivered someone of an evil spirit. You see, the enemy places something on someone just for his glorification. The reason why they locked him up is because this girl, by using the spirit or operating in the spirit, she was making them money. She was telling them, you know what? Give me money and I will tell you your future. Give me money and I will tell you your future. And when they saw that this lady can no longer predict the future or speak the future over people's life or their fortunes, uh, they got upset. They realized that this girl no longer can do what she's been doing. Paul and Silas got captive and thrown into prison. And after a couple of messages, they got thrown into the inner prison. Now, if you understand what an inner prison is, it's almost like um, Paul's money. As you pause more prison, cry, that is a prison. But on a pause more, it's no a pause more. That's the inner prison, to put it plainly. It was somewhere that they put the worst of the worst. It was the worst uh, 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 sentence to be put in the inner prison because it's dark. There's no light. There's no light. It's underground, so it's moist. It's not good for your lungs. It's not good for your health. So they got thrown into the inner prison, the Bible says. Just for doing what God called them to do. Many people say, no, but I'm just doing what God wants them to do, but the enemy has nothing to do with them. But I want to tell each and every one of us, whether you shake someone's hand because God told you to shake their hand, or you walk up to a stranger in a mall to say, listen, God loves you. If you are doing it because of the calling, you cannot expect the enemy to just leave you alone. He will do all that he can to put you in prison. The Bible says that because they were thrown into the inner prisons, which means they can be, you know, like at least no gelos gewisset. But the Bible says they were still tied up by their feet. They were still tied up They were still tied up by their feet. And in those days, you weren't just tied up on your feet so you can walk around. You had another chain, chained to the wall. So you can only walk this distance. There's the rest of the prison, but the chain is only this long. So now I am confined it also. So the enemy will always try to restrict your movements while he's imprisoning you. Amen? And we have all different types of prisons and inner prisons. Every prison is tailor-made for your life. Because each of us, we have a calling that is also tailor-made for us to the glorification of God. Amen? Are you with me? But the Bible declares that when it came to a point, 12 o'clock at night, midnight, Paul and Silas in the pitch black darkness, 
Ons bly in Peniel, ne? Now Peniel, if you've been to Peniel at night, there's no street lights. So if you drive there, you won't be able to see. It's pitch black. And there's no open skies because of the trees that covers the road. So it's pitch black. If someone walks up to you with a gun straight pointing to your face, you won't even recognize it. That's how dark it is. Now have this picture in your mind. You start walking in this pitch black darkness and start singing some songs. That's bound to scare someone. That's less, yeah, yes, yes, spoken, yes. But the Bible says they started praising. They started praising. They didn't start praying because they understood why, how they came to be in the place that they were. But they started praising God for where they were. Because they realized that if it had not been for the calling that they have heard in a vision, they would not have ended up here. So whatever inspires and happens to them is according to the plan of God. For the Bible declares that the footsteps of a good man is ordered by God. But then we misunderstand that scripture because we think good man means good footsteps. But the footsteps of a good man can always sometimes lead him into imprisonment. <laughs> So they started praising the Lord because they understood that they are exactly where they needed to be according to God's timing. Amen? The Bible says as they were listening, all of a sudden a violent earthquake. A violent earthquake came over the prison. How can a... It's only God that can localize a earthquake. If you understand the term earthquake, it means that this whole region or this whole continent will be shaken because it's called an earthquake. But God localizes an earthquake to shake the foundation of a prison. While the foundation is being shaken, the doorposts starts wiggling and the gates flew open. Not only that, something that's not even attached to the earth, the earthquake shook off every prisoner's shackle. That's why I say I will stand on this pulpit and every week tell you that God is about to do something that is beyond your expectation, that is beyond your request, that is beyond human capacity to understand. So now, Paul and Silas, because God will set you free, he will set the person next to you free. But now the trick is, when we get imprisoned by the enemy or placed in a situation, we go silent. You know what? I can af wat volgende week was te klemmen. Ek gaan nie meer... Ek gaan dier die ding, man. Ek voel net nie, ek moet meer praat oor die woord van die Heere nie, want ek sit nou in my prison and ek is geboeie by, I'm not going to speak about these things. I'm going to wait again till I am on top of the mountain, then I'm going to speak better. <laughs> they started praising God while they were bound. They started praising God while they were imprisoned. They started praising God when they saw no light, when there was darkness around them and they did not understand how are we going to get set free, how are we going to be healed, how are we going to be delivered. I opened up my mouth and I started praising the Lord. And now, that is most known it, mal means, eh? Jammer for the word, but this must no malachite to start praising while you're in prison. To start praising, then in, 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 in the mooi thing is, before they got thrown into the inner prison, they were beaten. And they weren't pakkagi, hey, you love us out, hey? They were beaten. They were bleeding cuffed by their feet and thrown into prison. They were praising God in darkness, in prison, cuffed by their feet, bleeding out. And they said, Lord, nochtans. 
nogtans, nogtans, nogtans. Your vision may not be what you knew or thought it was going to be, but you keep praising God while you are bleeding. It doesn't matter because that blood is not my source of life. God is my source of life. This, the change that is upon my feet is not the thing that's keeping me captive. That's why Paul says that I'm a slave unto God. The love of God captivates me. And I don't care about what's holding me back and who's speaking behind my back and who's stabbing me behind my back. I know that I am in the right place at the right time for God to do something supernatural in my life. So they kept on praising. The doors flew open. It didn't shake open and gently open. The Bible says it flew open. And now it's still open the door as you have heard. The Bible says that the jailer woke up and he saw all the prison doors were open. Now your jailer is the people that is still speaking about you when you were going down. They saw you lose your money, you were going down. They saw your marriage was going down, that, and they're still speaking about you. Those are your jailers. The people that is still proclaiming the negative thing where you were yesterday, they are still speaking and looking through that same glass. Those are your jailers. But the Bible says, because they did not keep silent, they kept on praising, they kept on worshiping, they opened up their mouth and testify. Even their jailers came to the Lord. The Bible says that their jailer pulled out his, his sword and he wanted to fall into his sword, kill himself because he thought everyone was gone. So he called for light. That's how I know the, dark, the prison was dark. He called for light to come see and check if everyone is still here. So they said, no, 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 no. Don't kill them. Don't kill yourself. So the one person that was speaking negative about you will come to you for advice. The person that watched you go down on, into the valley, sinking slowly, standing right in front of you, being able to reach out to you, but was just standing over you. That person will come to you for advice. How did you do it? Tell me, give me some of what saved you. And the Bible says he got saved and a bunch of the prisoners got saved. And they, he took them to his house and his whole household got saved. But this is the beauty of it. If you read further on, the Bible says that they sent a message to the magistrate to say, listen, this is what happened. Paul and Silas was making a loud noise in the inner prison. And then this weird thing started happening. And we are all scared. We abandoned our post as the gods. The enemy started fleeing. That's the thing when you start praising the Lord. The enemy scatters. When I start praising the Lord, some people get irritated. And those are the people that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> And they scatter. So they went to the magistrate and said, Kiki, there's some weird stuff going on in prison because Paul and Silas didn't want to shut their mouths and go to bed. They didn't want to listen. We beat them and we stabbed them. And and then this weird thing happened. And so the magistrate said, okay, go back and release those men. Before some weird, other weird stuff happened. And before the other things happened, they said, okay, and Paul says, what? They received the message. And Paul says, Hal het aan vir my geslaan, Hal het op my gespoeg, Hal het my in die tronk gesit vir my geboeie, Hal het vir my gelos hier om uit te bloei, Gaan sê vir hulle, hulle moet self vir my kom uitstap. Go tell them to come do their own dirty work. Because we're not leaving this prison. Until the one that put me in this prison is the same one that takes me out. I'm telling you tonight that the devil is about to walk you out of your prison himself. 
Because there is not a thing that you can do, that for you can contain, and for you can buy you, and for you can hold you. It is your time. It is your season. The, the enemy himself is going to walk you out of your prison and tell you, rather leave, rather leave, because you are complicating my plan. You begin now a spinner rack and the wheel of me. So I, I forget, leave us that blade away from me. The devil himself. So they came and they told them, okay, right. Manna, loop me. Asseblief, ons wil nie weet wat dit gebeur nie. You don't have to explain how you got loose. Ons wil niks weet hoe die weet, hoe die gebeur het nie. Just leave. Vat al die prisene saam met jou and leave. Because you are messing up my plan. I want to finish. I want to finish up. It doesn't matter what the prison is that you are placed in. Whether it's a mental prison. Whether it's a physical prison. Whether it is a, 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 a emotional prison. Whether it is a financial prison. Whether it is a social prison. Don't get quiet. Don't get quiet because someone needs to hear that there's someone that's going through something and that person is making it through and I am not making it through. I feel like giving up but just by you not keeping quiet, that person is willing to stand up and start praising with you and then the two of you are praising and start testifying about how God is carrying you through day by day and then there's another person that feels like giving up and that person says but I have make it moot om an to go and now it's us three that begin to praise and we start worshiping and the three of us is praising and we are not keeping quiet even though we are not healed and set free and perfect the way people want to be I spoke to my brother the other day and he told me you know what I don't want to come to the front every time there's an altar call and I told him I was in a place in my life where I was in a mental prison that I did not know whether I'm serving God right or am I serving God wrong so I went out to every single altar to call because I didn't want to shut my mouth. The enemy wanted to clean up. The enemy wanted to zip my mouth, tie my feet, tie my hands just to go into your the spirit of depression. Go into your corner, in your corner and do not come out. But I'm telling you today, I am a victor. I am a testimony of someone that does not shut his mouth for the Lord. I do not shut my mouth towards the enemy. I do not shut my mouth in prison but I open up my mouth because there is someone that sees that this man is not having what, everything. He's not he got all his ducks in a row but he's praising the Lord. I'm not the most mental and fit person but the Lord says I will not shout my mouth. And I know I'm shouting on you but that's how bad this message is. I will not shut my mouth and I'm telling you tonight even when the enemy, when I got set free when I got delivered, my enemies came to me. My enemies came to me and they blessed me. My enemies come to me and ask me to pray for them. The same people that mocked me and spat on me and looked down on me and walked over me are the same people that WhatsApps me today and ask me, how do you do it? You see, every time when something scary steps to you and faces you head on, you go quiet. But I'm here to tell you, don't go quiet. Don't go quiet. When Nicodemus was sitting and, and he was desperate to receive his sight from the Lord, the people said, shh, shut your mouth. The Lord don't have time for your problems. He doesn't have time for your issues. Hij is hier bezig met ons, met rechte probleme. Hy het die tyd vir jou bedel gees, hier so nie. Los die dinge man, jy stink, jy slaap buiten. Los die dinge, die Heer is bezig met ons wat alright is. And he refused to keep quiet. He kept on shouting, Jesus, Jesus, son of Nazareth, son of David, if you hear me, save my soul. And out of all the people that surrounded Jesus, Jesus heard. 
And Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, that I might receive my sight. I'm hungry, but that I might receive my sight. You can keep playing, you can keep playing. That I might receive my sight. I need money, but that I might receive my sight. You see, Nicodemus understood. If he has his sight, he can generate money. If he can see, if he has vision, he will know where to walk, how to walk, how to build, how to greet, how to speak. How Stop asking the Lord for a quick fix. Because if you're trusting God for a quick fix, that's when you're going to become miserable because you're not getting out of prison. I just, I'm just praising you today, Lord, because I want to get out of the situation where I am right now. That's the reason why I'm here. I want to get loose. I want to be healed, set free and delivered because I'm tired of this prison. The only reason why I'm here is because I want a job. I'm looking for a quick fix. But I'm not talking to those people. I'm talking to the people that praises God in and out of season. I'm speaking to the people all across the country that is so desperate for God, whether I am in prison or out of prison, whether I'm in the valley or on the mountain, the Lord will receive my praise in Jesus' name. You see, we are too scared of the enemy. In Joshua 6, when Joshua then received the instruction to, to walk around the walls of Jericho, walk around the walls of Jericho, they were not just instructed by God to walk, they were instructed to praise. Every time they went through a cycle, they praised. Every time they go through something, they ended up praising. And I'm not praising about, yes, Lord, we thank you. Oh, we love you, Lord. I'm not talking about that kind of praise. I'm talking about someone that, yenna man, die antire dier my die wees, sy sing heel te mal vals, maar sy sing hadder as ons amal man, en jy verstaan nie wat gaan aan met die antie nie, maar die antie prees die Heere, laat die besies beer. Her sons and her daughters are stuck in drugs and, and, and they, 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 they went through all this stuff and whatever but this auntie is just making a noise for the Lord I can't even focus in praise and worship because she's so distracting maybe you should stop being distracted and start listening maybe you are the other prisoner in the next room that needs to listen to this person praying Paul and Silas was busy praising the Lord and then the other prisoners started listening there's some people in this room that needs to hear your praise at this moment I want you to stand in this place right now I want you to stand in this place right now I want you to stand in the place right now